Hello. Hello, Mr. Recruiter. I need you to find me a boy that can write code on green screen and do it as soon as possible. Yes, boss, I'm on it. Hey guys, this is Joy. Before we dive into the tutorial on how to actually implement this, let's talk about what this tutorial is about and what's not. It's just going to take about a minute, but I believe this is important as I value your time and I don't want you to end up spending next 20 to 30 minutes of your precious life if this isn't something you're looking for. So here it is, what this is not about. This is not about how to build a hello world or a to-do application or how to build a front-end website using HTML or CSS. What is this about? Like I said, we are not going to be building a front-end from scratch. Instead, I already have made a front-end site and pushed it to the GitHub repo so that you can get straight to the exciting part, which is to build a serverless web application using AWS Cloud. And we're going to be using this front-end personal resume website that is built using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I chose to do a personal resume website because I felt like this is something you can talk about or at least link it to in your resume when looking for a job or interview. It serves as a very good first impression. You don't need to have an extensive domain experience in AWS to follow along this video because I will walk you through each step of the way. However, you need to have a little bit of programming understanding to follow along easily. Now I'm going to briefly go over what we're going to be doing. We'll clone the front end repo and use AWS for the rest of the video. We'll be coding our back end using Python and we'll be applying a concept called serverless microservice framework. Imagine taking an application, chopping it up into pieces and running it as a collection of smaller parts instead of a one monolithic whole. That's basically what a microservice architecture is about. On AWS, we'll start with creating an IAM role, then codify our AWS Lambda function, create REST API using AWS API Gateway, install Postman and test our API endpoint with Postman. We'll briefly go over AWS CloudWatch that stores and monitor log events we will talk about lambda events and context and see how to handle post requests. You will set up your own SNS topic and then use lambda to send email notification and SMS to your phone. And finally, we will integrate both front end and back end part of the AWS where I will cover how to enable cross origin resource sharing. We will touch the front end and most importantly, we are going to be hosting our web application in AWS S3 bucket. You will walk away with a shareable functional link that you can share with your friends or family or simply post it on your resume or LinkedIn profile. I did the same thing when I used to go to University Career Fair. I would link my website in the hard copy version of my resume. A lot of the employers values this kind of initiative because it shows that you are a go-getter and self service type of person. Your skills just on in paper, but also backed by a functional website that is hosted on the cloud. Cloud is the hardest thing in the technology space right now. And if you can demonstrate this kind of skill that you have to your potential employer, it will be a huge bonus for you and will separate you from the crowd. Now without talking further, let's get into it. Okay, so for our convenience, I already push all this file to the GitHub repo, so you can just go ahead and clone it directly into your computer. So I posted the link on the description below. You can grab it from there, or you can just type that URL into the browser, and it will take you to this page. Most of you guys that are watching this video, I'm pretty sure you already have Git client installed on your computer. If it is not, then it's not really necessary, but I would highly recommend it to be installed. Or you can just download the zip folder. That would also work. So I'll go ahead and copy this link and open my terminal. See, I have my terminal open. Let's go ahead and type git clone and then post the uh, URL that I copied earlier. Looks like it cloned it correctly. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and change directory into that project. 
okay looks good i have all the file that i necessary uh, i'm gonna open binder real quick and locate the index.html file so index.html file is the file that actually the browser would look for so i'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop the index.html file into the browser all right, so it looks like we have our website up and running. That's good. Uh, next thing I want to make sure is all these links are working properly. All right, great. Looks everything good. So let's go ahead and open up a new tab and type aws.amazon.com and then click on sign into the console. Type in your username and password and log in. All right, so we logged into the console and want to search for a service called IM. Stand for Identity Access Management. It enables you to manage access to different AWS services like S3, Lambda, and so on. So those are different resources that you want to be able to access, right? And IAM allows you to access them very securely. For example, you can create an IAM role, which we are about to do right now, to allow a Lambda function, call all the other services that AWS provides. Click on IAM. That will take us to the IAM page. But we have our role on the left side menu. Click on that. And what we want to do is next is create a role. Uh, so click on Lambda. So basically, we're going to be creating a Lambda function. And the Lambda function will need to have enough permission to be able to, one thing is write log to a service called CloudWatch. And the second thing is SNS, which stands for Simple Notification Service, which we have seen earlier that uh, once we type in the form and then click it on submit, that sends a notification to our phone and the mail done through SNS. So Lambda would need to have programmatic access to that service to be able to send the notification to your phone. So let's go ahead and uh, select Lambda and click on next permission all right so here we want to attach a policy policy allows you to define a bunch of different things any specific service can do on your behalf for example if it is in cloudwatch a lambda could have read access only or it could have read write create access so we want to give lambda function enough permission to be able to read and write to the cloudwatch monitor and also as well as the sns let's go ahead and type lambda basic let's check that one this policy would allow a lambda to to be able to uh, call CloudWatch and create log group and create log stream and put log event and that's what it's going to be doing basically so if you go up okay so uh, minimize that and we also want another uh, policy name called SNS so the first one Amazon SNS full access check that one too so we have access to the SNS too so let's click on next tags uh, so let's give this role a name it'll be easy for us to identify down the line so let's make it API role click on next review from API role so we have specified role name and the role description as well that looks good and we have our two policies that we attached earlier all right let's go ahead and create the role we have our role created successfully as you can see the success measures in the top bar so now that we have our form api role has been created successfully the next thing uh, create the lambda function well if you're new to this thing called AWS and all these different buzzwords and all these services, it sounds overwhelming to you, follow along and eventually it will all make sense to you. So let's go ahead and search for a service called Lambda. Search, click on that and we have our lambda function page right here one thing you want to really make sure is that uh, i'm really going to emphasize that so you actually pay attention to this so this right here the region on the top corner is make sure it is saying us east north virginia us east one because each region is separated geographically and has multiple isolated location known as availability zone and those zones provide you the ability to place resources such as compute and storage in multiple locations closer to your end user but that's not the topic of this video so for the sake of simplicity let's make sure we're in the same region and let's call it north virginia to make sure is we are in the same region for all these different things that we do some of the services do not require to select a region however a lambda function that actually require to select a region in this case we're going to select north virginia all right so let's go ahead and create a function and so the basic information that we want to provide is a function name called form api and then we want to select our runtime so aws allows different programming language support so in our case we're going to choose is python 3.8 okay so right under the permission you want to select choose or create an execution role click on that and then from the drop down you want to select use an existing role 
which is what we created earlier in the last video so let's go ahead and click on that and if you just click on this button right here it will pull up our role or you can search for it from api role and it will pull up that one right here and then click on create function all right so we have our function created successfully but next is create our rest api but before you even do that what we want to do is add trigger so lambda would allow you to add a trigger that would trigger this function so for example if something hit our api and if it is a valid request then it will trigger this lambda function and they would execute and at the end it will respond like hello from lambda or something similar so let's go ahead and add a trigger api gateway create a new api select rest api and then for security we want to do open with an api key but one thing to remember is that when you use an api key you would have to pass that a key when you're making the https request but i'll show you that in a bit later okay so i want to clarify one thing real quick and i think most of you guys who are watching these videos are probably familiar with api key thing but those of you who are not so think of it just like a key that you could hand to an individual and you can control how many times that individual can go ahead and use that key on your front door just as simple as that so let's go ahead and click on additional settings the default stage change it and type dab and then everything else looks good click on add now okay so that looks good the trigger from api was successfully added to the function from api we have our from api endpoint right here uh, and an api key so what we want to do is want to copy this api to the clipboard and paste it into a separate text editor code i'll copy paste my endpoint copy it to my favorite text editor next thing we want to be able to test this uh, api to see if it actually works there are multiple different ways you can test your api but in our case we'll be using postman and i'm gonna go through the installation process so let's go ahead and search for postman click on the first link and click on download and download the postman allow so we have postman up here so let's go ahead and create a new uh, request let's give it a request name form request and create a new collection from apis that looks good all right save to form apis okay remember the part where we receive an api key and endpoint from aws lambda let's go and grab that right now copy the url paste it in the bar right there but before you hit send make sure you get request this is not gonna work and we're gonna receive a message saying forbidden and that's fine uh, because we are not actually passing the API key with the request. So what we have to do is modify the header and type X API key and we wanna also pass the value but let's go grab that and paste it here in the value section. I can now hit send. Okay, so we get a 200 response and we also get a response saying hello from Lambda. That means it's working okay let's switch back to the console and you can see aws giving us some sample code to work with and we're going to modify that to work with our own so as you can see on the upper right corner lambda function and lambda handler the very first thing would happen when the lambda get triggered is that the fact that it will look for lambda function the pi file and that file would have the method called lambda handler and that lambda handler would get executed and any method within that lambda handler would also get executed so think of it more of like a main function for your java or c plus plus whatever language it is but that's what the idea is now you can change that name into anything you want and call it anything you want to call it but for the sake of consistency we're gonna keep it as lambda handler throughout the project so let's talk about the other aspect of the lambda which is the invent and the context that is being passed as a parameter to the lambda handler now if you think about it when lambda runs your function it passes a context object to the handler this object provides methods and pro properties that provide information about the function itself, invocation, and the execution environment. Now basically, event represents the event or trigger that caused the invocation of the lambda. For example, if our lambda is triggered by an API gateway from our front end, it will contain information that being passed from the front end in a JSON format and we would be able to pass it easily. Now to put it more simply, think of event as an input 
given to a regular function and context is an extra input supplied by AWS to give you a variety of metadata and context and so on. Now don't worry too much about this concept and everything. As we start coding more and more, it will start to make more sense down the line. So we're gonna go ahead and print the body of the message and modify the response a little bit to distinguish it easily between the previous one and the new call and save it. Open up the postman and submit a get request. Awesome, we see a response back from the Lambda saying hello F Lambda and that's fine if, even if there's an F between them. Okay, now we're gonna search for this CloudWatch service in the console. Okay, so open it in a new tab. So CloudWatch collects all the monitoring and operational data in the forms of a log, metrics and events and you'll be able to see all the logs that have been created by your Lambda method. So you, if you want to look for your logs, click on logs or you can just click on log groups and you can see the path to your log, uh, the log groups, AWS Lambda from API named after your Lambda function name and the log stream, you can see the topmost one will be the most recent one. So let's click on that. All right, so as you can see, our message is showing none. And that's because if you open up Postman and in our body section, we haven't really passed anything to the uh, Lambda. So let's simulate a form data and give it a name and call it John. Email, would, let's call it John at email.com. And here sends again. Now, if you go back to our CloudWatch console and then refresh it a couple times cl and click on it again. All right, so now we see detailed message of our log. So that includes the body of the name and then everything that we submitted from the postman, which is great. So in our case, as you can see, our code is very simple and the output is very simple as well. But if you're writing really complex code and you want to see every bit of your code log stream, then you would use CloudWatch. All right, so this is it for the part one. In the part two, we will improve this code and then complete it by integrating and testing with our front end and then end with us hosting our website in the S3 bucket. So see you then.